Zero accounting software. Sales by customer and sales by item reports. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, zooming in by holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175% zoom in. Opening the demo by selecting the reset button, which will open the demo and reset the data at the same time. We're then gonna go through the setup process we do every time. That being duplicating a couple tabs up top to put our financial reports in by right click in the tab up top to duplicate it right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again back to the middle tab so we can go to the accounting drop down and pull up that balance sheet report tab to the right so we can go to the accounting drop down again income statement p l profit and loss whatever you want to call it back to the middle tab and let's do a change to the range a change to the date here to the 31st and update that's the setup process that we've been doing every time remember that these are our two major financial statement reports all other reports typically given more information about one or multiple line items on these two major reports if i go to the income statement then we're going to scroll down and we're looking at the sales item so now we want some reports that are going to give us some more detail about the sales line item before we open them Let's just give a quick recap of what's being reported on the income statement and why the sales revenue or income lines are typically recorded the way they are. The income statement, performance statement, you will recall. It's gonna show how we did over a time frame, beginning to the end, how far did we go? How much revenue did we get? How many expenses did we incur? What's the difference between the two? What's the net income in other words? When we look at the income, we usually have very few income accounts compared to the number of expense accounts because when you think about the types of things we do, there's usually a specialization. There's a limited number of things we do Whereas the things that we purchase in order to facilitate the revenue generation has more categorization uh, down below. So in other words, you might be tempted, and this is important when you're setting up your company file, to create multiple sales, revenue, or income accounts by say large customers. You might say, hey, look, I wanna break out this revenue account by this customer. You don't typically want to do that because uh, for one, you, you might get that added detail on other reports, and therefore you just typically want the sales by what you are selling, inventory possibly, and service items possibly, possibly some large subcategories within them, but you don't want to be breaking it out by every customer, like a sales general ledger account. The other thing people tend to do is have too many items, breaking out their sales by item, meaning inventory item or sales item, which can make your income statement very long uh, uh, as well and you and that's usually not good for reading the income statement just generally and uh, hopefully in, in many cases you can then generate other reports that will give you that added detail if you want it in that uh, format breaking up the sales or revenue or income by customer so that's what we'll look at now so I'm going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate it and then let's go to the reports accounting drop down reports and then you've got your sales by customer and you've also got the income and expense uh, by customer. I think it's income expense by this one, income and expense by, cus by contact. So contacts include customers. So let's try this one uh, first. I'm gonna open this one up. And this is a, a nice report that's gonna be giving us both the income and expenses but it's breaking it out by the contacts which are going to be of course customers in the case of the revenue items 
and vendors you would think general terminology in the case of the expense items now we just want the revenue items in this case so i can go up top and let's change the date range let's bring it for the full year of december so let's bring it to uh january at the starting point so january 1st to december 31st let's update it so there's our our information now we're going to use our filtering tool I'm going to go to the filtering tool and say we just want the the uh, contact or let's go to type let's go to the, the type and we just want the income items so we want all the income items and then apply the filter and update so then you've we've got our up our information up top they, they're showing the multiple period comparisons by default what I'm going to do is turn that off right now I'm going to hit the drop down and say none just to start off with and update okay so now we've got the contact which are in essence the customers because we're talking income line items and now we can see our income by customer so you so in this case you wouldn't then need to be uh, putting all your customer line items on your income statement over here because it'll muddy up your income statement one and two you can run a, a report usually to give you this added information, uh, breaking it out by customer. Now note, you would think that this total 30,658.86 would tie out exactly to this number, 30,000, it's pretty close, but it's not exact. And there's, and there's a couple reasons it wouldn't be exact. Meaning uh, if I looked at my flow chart, for example, we're on the revenue side of things. And remember income is gonna be entered into the system by when we enter a form either an invoice form or we can enter you know a form that would be a, a receive cash type of form like at a check register type of situation so these are the natural two forms that you would use and usually when you use those two kind of forms an invoice or like a money in form uh you're you're going to be adding a customer field in those forms however it's possible to just enter a deposit and not add the customer and that could if you turn on bank feeds you might sometimes have a situation where the bank feed comes in but you don't have a customer name you just you have the deposit and maybe you don't add the customer in that case you might lose some of this added detail that you you would get by breaking the information out by by customer so you got to be careful with the bank feeds can sometimes throw off the subsidiary reports although the ease of using the bank feed in certain situations like for example if you're just getting paid by youtube or something is often uh worth you know worth worthwhile of the loss of the added kind of detail that uh, you might get you can also enter a journal entry and adjusting journal entry that wouldn't use these forms and not include a customer and that will throw off your sub ledger from your income statement so you got to kind of be aware of those things the sub ledger we looked at before the two we looked at before, which were uh, the accounts receivable. Uh, let me change my date range. Didn't I change my date range? I thought I did this to this should be 2022. We looked at the sub ledger for uh, accounts receivable and the accounts payable. Now, oftentimes software is more rigorous with these two accounts to kind of force your sub ledger to tie out by saying, hey, if you report something without a contact and it's gonna be an invoice or a bill, then maybe we won't even let you report it, right? Because we want you to basically tie these out. They're not that strict with some of the other subledgers. So with the income line item, you can report something to the sales account without adding a customer if you want to. But if you can add the customer, you always want to do so because it's gonna give you more searchability details within uh, the systems such as having your your income broken out by customer so now you can sort this data by customer now you've got your details to edit it up top so we saw before we have this comparison so i could compare like to the, the prior period as we saw with other kinds of reports and, and look at what we did this year in a customer by customer to prior years and you can also of course export this report to excel which is a great tool because then you can sort this information, say by who paid you the most kind of thing versus alphabetical order by contact. And you can also do cool things there like make pie charts and whatnot. This is a good number to like make pie charts and whatnot 
with as well. So that's that report. Let's make the other one. I'm gonna right click on this tab, duplicate it again. And this time go to the accounting dropdown reports. And this other one's gonna be a sales report. I think it's all the way at the bottom, sales by item, which is kind of hard to remember sometimes. You could also type it in here, sales, and you can find your different reports. It's a little confusing because you got the sales by item, whereas this report's called income and expenses. So they're using kind of different terms for sale, for revenue, sales, income, uh, revenue. But once you get this one open, we can then say that this is going to be, I'm going to go from January again, January back on here first to December 31st. And then I've got the item code versus the description. I'll keep the, well, let's see what it does with the description. Let's go to the description versus item code that we can sort the data on down below i'm going to scroll in a bit and so there we have it now this one is giving us the item that we're breaking out by now the item is the thing that uh, that we're recording on the invoice or the money in form so in other words if i go back to the first tab drop down and make an invoice then we generally want to sort our our sales by item so these items here and that and that's a great tool even if you don't sell inventory items and you have service items because it allows you to break out in that format if you just have hourly work then you might not enter an item you might just enter your your price over here quanti you know you might you know you might just say that you have a description hours you know three at fifty dollars or something like that and you don't have the items over here but anytime, even in a service company that you can add the items, it's often useful because it can help you with your billing process. If you're doing the billing process and it can help you to sort your sales with a sub report by item. Now I'm, I'm gonna go back on over here. Now you can see that there's a big difference between the total by item 9,121.21 and uh, the sales line on the income statement 30,623. And that's because if I go to the sales line in here, I believe that's because a lot of these invoices that were put in place to create this in the practice account aren't using the item. See right here, the item field is an input. They just put the description and the quantity. That's great. You can still do that, but notice you lose you lose the ability to sort by this sub sub ledger, which maybe you don't need, you know. But if you if you add the items, you get that more detail. So in other words, if I go back to my my flowchart over here, if you have the kind of business where you're you're getting paid by like gig work for, and you're just gonna wait till it clears the bank and then you enter it with a deposit form, for example, through the bank feeds then you're probably you're not going to add items because typically you don't add items on just like a deposit type of thing right you're just going to increase uh increase it there and you don't really need to track by the items because you have a fairly simplified system but if you're making sales at like a cash register or you're making an invoice then oftentimes you might have a more sophisticated system where you're selling different types of inventory or different types of services and there you would often want to be entering the item in here if you can because it'll give you it'll give you that added level of detail that will able to sort our revenue out by item. So we'd have our revenue line item that we can break out by basically uh, what we sold up top. So you can see here, notice that they do tie it in. They got the 30,658.86, which is which is the 30,623. And I think we might have like other income. No. But in any case, it's it's pretty close, but they got all the stuff down here. Here's your sales by item. And then you've got other sales, cash sales and, and credits on down below. So there's a fairly small amount of actual sales where they included the item in the invoice or the receive payment form. So these, these sub ledgers are not as reliable in that they're gonna tie out exactly to the income statement as the accounts receivable, accounts payable subledgers often are more reliable to tie into the balance sheet accounts of accounts payable and accounts receivable that we saw before. But the more you're using the actual accounting system forms, which are invoices and the received payments, and the more you're assigning, of course, customers as you use those forms, 
and items, service items, inventory items, the more then these reports should, should be accurate uh, and line up. And if they are, then you've got that added level of detail. And you, you can once again, export this, for example, to uh, Excel, and you can sort this data by item, what you're selling. You can make pie charts and whatnot out of that data for presentation purposes and so on.